worshiping. But we're having someone in the hospital that we think hope is gone. But God said no. We were crying. Is it going to be? Is Prophet Prince going to see again? Is it going to work again? Pastor Christian, he's like, can you walk normal again? But where is he now? The young brother. He see hope. He has restored life. He has given us peace. This church by the grace of God. How must love it? Yes, now. None of us is lost. Jesus.
said when we worship him, he will draw all men to himself. Father, we bless you for this atmosphere. We bless you for the touch. We bless you for being with us that today is not as any other day. Today is different. We bless you for your, your presence. We bless you for what you have done. We bless you for the things you have deposited. We bless you, King of Glory. Let your name alone be exalted. Father, we worship you. We bless you, King of Glory. Be thou exalted, Father. We bless you. mighty name. Amen. Please a clap offering unto the Lord. A clap offering with a standing with a standing innovation. Clap your hands to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The I am that I am. The ancient of days. The one who is and who was and who is to come. Bless the name of the Lord. With a clap offering. We salute your supreme message this morning. There is none like him. Amen. Amen. This is a powerful service. Whoever that will tap in any side will be blessed. Amen. Just thank to your brother and welcome your brother with a, with a smile. Bless somebody this morning. Bless somebody. Move from your seat. Bless somebody. Bless somebody. Bless somebody. It's been a while. Hallelujah. We bless God for today. Amen. And today I'm your MC. Yeah. Today is anointing service. Even from the beginning of the prayer till now, everything shows that God is in charge. God is in control. Amen. So without wasting my time, we'll be taking our testimonies. And I know that there are many people that God has done a lot for. Come and testify for more testimonies. Come and testify. Don't sit on the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. Can we give a clapping offering unto the Lord Jesus Christ? Wow. People of God, I have a testimony, but when I entered in the service, the Lord started speaking to me, even through the Bible service, the Bible studies. And my heart goes, I've been praying since dawn. My testimony here is the Lord have done something so wonderful that I can't explain. In our room, in our bedroom, I was Friday, I was alone at home in the morning. When my wife left, she went to work and she called me, she's coming back. So I've done some stuff. So I laid the bed. In the evening, you know me, I like playing. So I even do some uh, gymnastics on the bed. I tend there. My wife lay at that side. In the morning, we wake up, we pray. So I decide to sit beside my wife and I just push my hand under the pillow. You know what I'm touching? Needle. A needle. I said, ah, my wife, but we lay the bed, where this needle come from? She has to tell me that she put that needle somewhere before on the curtains. So the needle was there and it couldn't. Can you imagine? The needle is so it can enter the skin so easy. So we be doing everything there. No needle in our body. See how God has saved us. You see, somebody will not see it as great oh, till the thing become worse. Then we see if God has saved me. Hallelujah. And I bless God for his protection. Because it's a God in the invisible world that take care of us. Hallelujah. Sister Paulina, God bless you. I was here and writing and waiting. I don't know if I have to stop the Bible study and pick the microphone. So in my heart I said, pray, wait for the testimony. 
God has spoken about three things. Three things. The first one, he said, we have forgotten that he's the one who has called us. The reality of the, of the world is robbing us from our relationship with God. The realities of the world. Some are financial realities. Some are challenges. And because of that, the standard of Christianity is dropping. Mm. And then the Lord take me in the Bible, in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1, I believe. When you read all the chapters till, till the verse 15, you will realize that Apostle Paul was telling Timothy to keep the good, well, I don't know how to say it in English. But in French, we say le bon dépôt. So, who stand up for the doctrine? People of God, Christianity is dying. And after then, the Lord was talking about our truthfulness. It's a great teaching. And being truthful, then we, we trust the spiritual side that he has given to us. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20. He said, believe in his prophet that you shall be established. The trust in the man of God and the man of God is dying, especially in the one that we have in the house. That's why what is happening to us is happening. The Lord said we should trust. If you don't, it's the lack of trust in the Lord that makes us hiding our suffering. Why Matthew 11 verse 28 say, bring all those who are labor. You are hiding it because there's no trust. And when you suffer under the burden, what will come? Next time we will smell your roti. Hallelujah. The Lord was speaking to us. People of God. When you go out today, you will realize that Christianity is dead. It's dying. That's why the Lord said, the, the little that remains, keep it. Keep it. It's an, uh, I don't know if it's on the edge or what. It's a commandment. It's a command. We should, we should keep the little that is about to die. Holiness is dying. The true standing of the Lord is dying. Christians are giving up. Christians are giving up. Who enlightened the world? Then I was here, gift this side. I can feel them. Give this side. Give this side. Then I was wondering, because we are some spiritual being that we can't understand that God has given to us. But we are dying. The Bible says, I told you you are gods, but you are dying like prince. This is what is happening to us. People of God, let's go back to the Lord. Let's go back to the Lord and trust what God has given to us and live as a Christian. Yes, you may find yourself in bondage, but that God is capable, is able to set you free. That's why this morning, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we sang, Our God is wonderful. See the wonders of healing. See the wonders of breakthrough. See the wonders of opening door. See the wonders of upliftment. See the wonders of establishment. See the wonders of fulfillment. See the wonders of settlement. Hallelujah. We should trust that God. God bless us. Amen. Hallelujah. Please, before I begin my, uh, my testimony, I just want to sing this song. Mesu mene wine. A dear Benquan, I want me fear. Now we're riding young coupon. Now would they be a pen to me? Samantha was here, and you know, Mamma, men, you know, so many wine bees a dear man crying I want me fear now we're riding your couple now what do you mean to me Samantha was here and you know my mom and you know I'm saying right in your me yeah for son I am standing here. I just want to thank God for my life. Maybe a lot of people will not understand me. 
I don't know what I've eaten. I don't know what has happened. All of a sudden, I woke up one day coughing blood. You may not understand. The whole one week, I couldn't do anything. In the morning, I wake up, I'll be all right. In the evening, then I'm sick. People will not understand. They took me to hospital. I prayed. But I feel like all hope is lost. But I still believe that there is God who can do all things for me. After I went to the hospital, they told me I was having some sickness. It's, a, it's an infection. But me, to me, I didn't believe because I have a living God that I serve. And what, when the doctor said the thing, I just smiled. And he was like, he was amazed I was smiling. Because I serve a living God. Since I have changed, I have never fall sick. And they told me that someone wants to poison me. But me, I believe God that since that time I was even in the world, they have poisoned me, but I didn't die. I even took concussion, concussion and I didn't die. So why would I be in Christ Jesus that I repent to serve him in truth and in holiness that will poison me, that it will affect me? I started praying. And I asked God, God, if it's your will, let it be done. But if it's not your will, let it be clean. Let it be canceled in Jesus' name. And I don't know, even I didn't even know that daddy was coming. And he came and he gave, he prayed over the water for me. That day I went home and I prayed. I was drinking it and I prayed. I went to sleep all of a sudden. Then I, I finished drinking the water. When I, I sneezed, it was full of blood. And I prayed. And I said, I know that thing that is in me has gotten out. And I want to say one thing that sometimes if God has sent daddy outside to go and do mission, we should always be praying for him. Because no matter his difficult time, he doesn't care about himself, but he will come back and awake us up. Whenever we are in difficult time, sometimes we, we, we find it in a way of even losing our hope and our trust in the Lord. That is when he come back and awake us because we are sleeping and slumber. But he come and he awakes us. So we should always pray for him. Without him, I don't think we can also stand in our ground today that we say we are Christian. We are in holiness. May God bless him. Today is Father's Day. I just want to thank God for his life. May whatever, whatever he need may he be granted to him. May God give him long life. If Jesus died, whatever we have planned in our heart to do for him, may he always come to pass in Jesus Christ's name. I just want to thank God for, God, for, for his life once again. I just want to say, Baba oh, eh, just want to say Baba oh, I just want to thank you for that is life I just want to say Baba oh, I knew in your presence just to thank him for our life I just want to say Thank you for Daddy Phillips life and Mama Macaulay's life. I just want to say Baba oh, eh, Even though I was stubbornness, I just want to say Baba oh, eh, Even though our difficult time even though our stubbornness, God has not let that if Philip even reject us. He always even uh, ignore all the things we do to him. God should have mercy on us and forgive our sins. I 
just want to say thank you for his life for brighten our spirit brighten our life brighten our path leading us to the right path the narrow way I just want to say Baba oh yes I just want to say Baba and a wonderful year to my age. I pray the years ahead of me will be a good health and a beautiful and a successful end to the Lord. Amen. And I thank God for all the pastors and I wish them Happy Father's Day. And we wish our father, Pastor Philip Macaulay, wherever he is, Happy Father's Day. And we bless God for his life. Amen. Sing it with me if you can. Makuma Asema Asema Ebusu Makoto Pusama Sochi Afe Jesus, we will show you to me. see me the same purple. But there was something happening to me that people didn't know. Anytime I step out from my house, I feel the atmosphere of death. Amen. If I sit in a car, I smell death. If I'm on a bike, no death. At times we don't know what God delivers us from. Especially when we go out. by this time 
there was a time of pain. When Sister Paulina was in ministry, she said, he doesn't know if Prophet Prince will be awake again. Then images started coming. I was saw him under the car. How there was blood over him. How he was unconscious. How Pastor Christian was screaming in the leg. How there was blood on my dress. And I remember I called my wife and my wife said she had a dream. That they were performing autopsy on me. Like a dead man. It's God that keeps us people. It's not our driving skill. It's God. Sometimes we sit down, we say we don't have testimony, but we have testimonies. May God keep us always. Keep our families. Our going and our coming. May God keep those that are in mission. Preserve their food. God, um, before we pray for the testifiers, I want to say something a little. There is something that is given unto us that is not everybody that is having it. There are chances, opportunities, a certain grace. I don't have any of my family members here. I'm here alone. There is a journey that we are working on and it's an individual journey even though we are in a church we will not die the same day i have my day of exit you have yours but i want to bring our mind back to this call is not for joke this call is not for jokers whoever that is not serious cannot be part of the train that is moving Let's come back to ourselves. The old people wouldn't have given their head to the life that we are living right now. There are so many sacrifices people have made for you and I to be here. Don't joke with your Christian life. As I'm speaking, it's not like I'm perfect. I'm speaking to myself. Don't joke with your Christian life. It's good to be funny, to joke around. But... Don't joke with it. Don't joke. When they were doing the worship and they say he is wonderful. So within myself I felt he said you are part of my wonders. My change is part of his wonders. What he has delivered me from is part of his wonders. Am I wasting his time? What are we supposed to do that we are keeping time? But to get to a time we cannot gather like this. There are people God God use you to talk to them and you know that God placed you there for this person at this particular time why are we joking with the things of God let's be serious he, he will deliver you and after the deliverance he is expecting you to run enough of wasting his time for if it's like that he will leave us and raise other people don't be alive and God will drop you and pick somebody else May the Lord have mercy on you and I. That will, our focus will not be on money, on the things of the world. There is something that is so precious, which is life. Without life, your money and your everything is nothing. Let's focus on the call. Whatever that is taking your focus from God, I will plead with you to go back. I have a friend in Australia that is sick right now. She's having cancer. She had money. She was coming to Ghana. She can come to Ghana and do other things and go back. But now all the money that she have, 
even though she's a citizen of Australia, she's having breast cancer. And whenever I talk to her, she said, Ben, whenever you talk to me, I feel like I'm coming back to life because the doctors are telling me I'm going to die. If we depend everything on how we travel outside and make money and buy big cars, there are things people are going through you have never seen before. Don't take this opportunity for granted. Be in line. Stay focused. You are not called to joke. So that you can redeem people and redeem your family. May the Lord have mercy on you and I. I'll call Mama to pray on the testifiers. Holy Spirit, we bless you for today. We bless you for each individual that stood up and come and give glory to your name. We pray that you remember them again and bless them to come and testify more to your glory. I also plead that you remember all of us that couldn't stand, that you keep on protecting us, keeping us as you always do. And bless us and prepare us, Lord, for your coming. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please, a clap offering unto the Lord. As we are calling on our Madam Announcer to give us the announcement. Amen. Hallelujah. I clap unto the Lord. We thank God for today and also for his presence in our midst. And we thank God for the life of our mother with us today. God bless you so much. And we appreciate all our pastors with us today. And you're all welcome to the Oasis of God Church. We are family that takes the grace of God to the doorstep of every individual with real love and also to make heaven. Amen. So today is a special day for all fathers. And as a church, we have a word for our father. Amen. So on this special day, we may have a lot to wish you, Pastor Philip. But we sum up saying your children love you and wish you heaven at last. You have been a, a great father to us. And we are grateful to have you as our father. God bless you for all your sacrifices. May the Lord keep you and sustain you by grace. Amen. A clap unto the Lord for the, for the life of Pastor Philip. He has been a blessing to us. Not just a pastor, but also a father. And we love you, Pastor. We love you so much. If he was here, he would ask you, he would ask us that if you really mean what you are saying. But really, we love Pastor Philip so much from our hearts. Amen. And we wish all the fathers in the house happy Father's Day to Amen. I don't know if we should wish their matters to <laughs> a, father's, a, a happy Father's Day, but we wish all fathers, you're all special to us. So as a lady or as women, as we close, you can do some small packages for the men. You have been a blessing to us. You can buy mods and pie to them. <laughs> Let's open our Bibles to Revelation chapter 2, verse 8. As we read about the church of Smyrna, to prepare ourselves of the tribulation which is ahead of us. So Revelation chapter 2 verse 8. It says, And unto the angel of the church his minor right, This thing says the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. I know the blasphemy of the research here, Jews and are not, but of the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. 
Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Verse 11. He that, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt by the second death. Amen. So our weekly activities are as follows. On Monday, we are meeting at the park at 6 p.m. for prayers. And on Wednesday, we are meeting here at 6 p.m. for our Wednesday service. And on Thursday, we are meeting at the park again at 3.30 p.m. for evangelism and also to pray. And on Friday, we are meeting here at 6 p.m. for our Friday service. And on Saturdays, the choristers meet here for rehearsal. And on Sunday, we are all meeting here for our Sunday service. And it's a joint service. Amen. So I can see a special lady among, among us. We want to know her name. We invited her if she is here to stay or to visit. Amen. Amen. I know you can all hear me. My name is um, Mavis. Um, the full name is D.B. Bo, but people know me as Mavis Deeps. Um, I came from Ireland here. Okay. I'm just here for a visit, but I'd say Prophet Prince <laughs> knows me more, and he invited me here. And um, I'm grateful to the Lord to be among the special people, Amen. oasis of God. Um, I thank God for the life of Pastor Philip and our mama in the house. Amen. Um, I'm just grateful to God. That's me. Okay. Amen. God bless you so much. And we really appreciate you for coming. Amen. So God bless us all. Hallelujah. Um, I believe we have been blessed today. Yes, so we shouldn't keep a cold atmosphere because it's, it's a blessing. Amen. So I want you to put your hand in your pocket. Take something special for God today, for what he has given you that you have not seen. I tell you, I have been blessed. Bless him back as the choir is giving us a song to take our offering. Amen. 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 Please let us be on our feet. Amen. And the ushers will direct us to be our offering. Media minim ya menya. Minim ya mehu. Yeti na menya ji. Media minim ya menya. Minim ya mehu. Yeti na menya ji. Media minim ya menya. Minim ya mehu. Yeti na menya ji. Yesu de ni moja na tome. Wama menya ni mkwaji ya enu. Yeah. 
Brought your tithe to church. Can you please come forward? Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the life of your servants as they have obeyed your word to bring their tithes to the house of the Lord. We pray that may there be a restoration. And wherever the money is coming from, Father, we pray grace over them. We pray that you will keep them and guide them and deliver them from any devourer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today, we have our prophets in the house. Who is going to be a blessing to us? It's been a long time since he blessed us. So I told him that also for today, dear, you are going to minister to us. So let's prepare our hearts as he will be coming. Open your heart for the word of God that he will be ministering to us. But before he come, we have a vessel in the house who will bless us with one sorrow. Let's put our hands together for sister. Emanuela, or Sofumame Emanuela. Bless you. Amen. Est-ce que tu peux acclamer le Seigneur? Acclame Jésus. Amen. I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone like you. Jesus, anyone like you. I never see 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 any man like you. I never see any love like you. I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone like you. I never see any God like you. I never see anyone like you. I never see any love like you. I never see any God like you. Oh, this kind God. May I never see your kind oh, this kind God. Oh. I will bless your holy name. This kind God, oh, may I never see your kind. Oh. This kind God, oh, I will bless your holy name. This kind God, oh, may I never see your kind. Oh. I 
will bless your holy name. Please bless God. I never see a kind of this kind God. Oh. I will bless your holy name. You are Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. It will accomplish it. It will accomplish it. You are
bless the name of the Lord for mommy and man Macaulay's life. I want to bless the name of God for the pastor's life. I want to bless the name of God for Sister Mavis's life. Please come. Come. If you're wondering why I'm, I'm using this instead of this, you know, I, this one this one is big. I, I don't want to be filled around. I, I, want, I want to be simple. You know, I'm a simple person. God, <laughs> my mother doesn't believe. <laughs> Amen. I met her some years ago. I don't get into five or six years, five years. And we became friends. And she introduced me to another lady that was Miss Grace. And today this lady is not with us anymore. Not that she's dead, but she's no longer believing God in holiness and righteousness. But I want to bless God that she is still standing. If I am a prophet or I am not a prophet, one of the people that can testify boldly is her. She knows me. She knows how God uses me. I bless God for her life. And I, I am so much happy that she is here today. I'm so much happy to have you here. God bless you so much. Do you have anything to tell the church? Praise God. Uh, I'm so grateful. I'm really, really grateful to the Lord. There is this joy that fills my heart. The fact that I know the Lord. And I can serve him in truth and in spirit. In fact, the lady he's talking about, she was the one who introduced me to the holiness journey. Um, how the Lord has found us. Um, I know that he has a place for us. There's something that really interests me. It says, in my father's house, there are many mansions. Whenever I think of my mansion, I must be there. I don't want to miss heaven. I cannot go to hell, beloved. Um, and this woman told me about holiness. I remember I was, I was going through, well, going to evangelism. I put on my trousers and everything, you know. And she stopped me. And we, went th we wanted to evangelize to people. She turned out to evangelize to me that day. And she was telling me how certain things are not right before God. Um, last two years ago, she came to me and told me, that she doesn't think it is 
um, we can do whatever. Just don't stay, don't go, don't sin, but you can do whatever you want to do with your body. It's not a sin. She has realized it's not a sin. And this is someone who has known the Lord for ten years. People will turn back their back to Jesus, whether we like it or not. Not every one of us will make heaven. Beloved, heaven is not cheap. Heaven is not cheap. Ah! This journey, please, eh, I beg you, hold God's hand. This is someone who will sit me down and call me and we'll fellowship together. She was on fire. In fact, I learned a lot of things from her. If you know the Lord, just serve him every day. Have a great relationship with God. One thing that has always kept me is my relationship with Jesus Christ. My personal relationship with him. I can advise every, any one of you to please be best friends with the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to be your best friend. Because if, if the church fall, if your fellow brethren fall, the Holy Spirit don't follow. Ah, I've never seen one the Holy Spirit fall. I've never seen one the Holy Spirit will tell you one thing today and tomorrow will tell you another thing. If it has happened, it's not the Holy Spirit. You never have the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will never let you down. Be his best friend. And that's what has always kept me, beloved. The Holy Spirit is here with me. If I'm going to the market today, if I'm going to this living room today, if I'm going to college today, let the Holy Spirit be with you. And you will never look back. I have a lot of things to say, so I'll just stop here. <laughs> God bless you so much. God bless her. I know how she preached. If we should have set a keyboard here for her right now, we're not close today. Amen. God bless you. Akosi, are you happy to see her? Yeah, we, we thank God. Amen. Today I'm working with Apostle Kingsley. You, you see that we are wearing the same clothes. Yeah, so we are connected in the spirit, right? <laughs> May the Lord Jesus bless. I want you to take a minute. I want you to pray to God. Say, Father. Uh, say, Father, I, wa I want you to come and fellowship with me this morning. I want you to speak to me. Open my ears for your word. Open my eyes to see. Because it was prophesied that go and tell them that seeing they will see and they will not perceive. Hearing they will hear and they will not understand. So it is not a coincidence or it is not a mistake that some people come to church and they are not blessed because their ears are sealed by the devil and their eyes are blinded by the devil. I don't think you want to be that person. So this minute I want, you to, I want to give you this opportunity to ask the Lord to. Open your spirit. Fill you up with the spirit. Fill you up with the spirit. Talk to the Lord, somebody, right now. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord, somebody. Worthy is there. Lamb that was slain, holy, holy is he. Sing a new song to him that sits on heaven's mercy seat. Mm. Worthy is day, Lamb the was slain, holy, holy is he. Oh, sing a new song to him that sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was a is and is to come. All creation has been praise to the King of Kings. i 
colors, flashes of lightning, rows of tender. Oh, blessings and honor, strength and glory and power be to you. silence before him let every mountain be broken let every storm be broken the Bible said the day King Uzziah died I saw the Lord I don't know what must die in your life for you to see God this afternoon or this morning depending wherever you find yourself I don't know what should die in your life for you to see God somebody the flesh must die in your life for you to see God whatever is active in your life that is not making you to see God this morning it must die for you to see God because when that thing is still in you you cannot see God until King Uzziah died the man of God's eye was closed God didn't open his eyes in prophecy but the Bible said when King Uzziah died he saw the Lord until that flesh died until that thing that is holding you captive die you cannot see the Lord and the power of his glory and the holiness of God you are holding your character intact something must die in you for you to see God what are you letting go somebody you must decide that I must stop drinking somebody you must decide that I must stop gossiping somebody you must decide that the word of God must be fresh and evident in my life until then you cannot see the power of God you cannot see the face of God your eyes is in perpetual darkness it is closed King Uzziah must die before the man of God saw the Lord he didn't only see the Lord he said something that so much interest me he said when King Uzziah died I saw the Lord he was sitting on a lofty throne and the train of his robe filled the temple this afternoon or this morning the power of God is filling this temple and I could feel the right from the service when the service started if you are kind now you cannot receive of God if your eyes is closed or if that thing that is supposed to leave you for you to see the power and the presence of God is still active in you you will live here not blessed you will live here still a carnal man you will live here still a carnal woman you will live here still a sinner something must die in you something needs to die stealing has to go lies have to go what is in you that must die the problem is that you still have your character intact. That is why you cannot receive of God. That is why whenever God is calling somebody, he said, deny yourself. Because if you don't deny yourself, it means you have yourself. You have your rights still in you intact. So you cannot receive of God. You cannot receive of God. You cannot receive of God. Something must die in you hear the voice of the Lord talking to you that something must die in you God has been warning you of this thing so long a time he has been correcting you your dream life is speaking to you but hey you still don't want to give it up you are not ready to see God for I see God sitting on his throne and the robe and his gift filled the temple the Bible said it filled the temple and when the Lord's holiness fills the temple his Shekinah glory fall and when the Shekinah glory fall you receive of him glory honor peace 
so you can't have peace to serve the Lord because you have not let that one thing go. You have not let that one thing slide. You are still having that thing intact in you. It is 100% fully charged. So God cannot invest in you. God cannot reveal himself to you. Somebody hear the voice of the Lord talking to you. I so much invested into into this service yesterday I was I was I was outside and I was praying I said God bless me with a voice to speak to your children may I not because it is a dangerous thing when you have an opportunity to be in the presence of the people of God and you could not tell them salvation and you could not tell them things that would trickle their ears things that will give their faith things that will boost them in faith things that will boost them in spirit things that will honor God you are a man of God that is preparing yourself or a woman of God that is preparing yourself for damnation because you had an opportunity to stand in front of the children of God, the assembly of God, the elite of God, the people God has bought with his blood and you are playing and you are joking. Man of God, be very careful. Woman of God, be very careful. In your room, be very careful. In your atmosphere, be very careful. Mind the things you hear. Mind the things you say. Mind the things you do. Mind the things you give yourself to. Mind the things you ponder. Mind the things you give your actions to because that thing will ruin you. It will destroy you. Today I'm talking about a prisoner of God. I don't know the revelation that Paul saw and called himself a prisoner of God. Even before going to prison, he counted himself because he said, I know the things that I do. I did and God confirmed it when Jesus met him. He said, I will show him how he must suffer. So that man was a prisoner walking on earth. Until you come to the realization that you are free on this earth, yet not free. It is better you subject yourself to God and be that prisoner of God. In that prison of God, there is liberty, there is salvation, there is blessing. It is the only prison I know that you can go and your life will change from worse to good. Because the prisons are known on this earth. You go there, people go there and come and they are lesbians and they are homosexuals and they are drug addicts. But this prison, when you are called to this prison, you become a righteous man. You become a sane man. You that was mad, you receive sanity in Christ. Mad in the atmosphere, mad in the world, but sane in Christ. Did somebody hear that? A prisoner of God. Who is a prisoner? A prisoner is somebody that is captured. That is detained of his rights by whoever caught him or by whoever detained him. That means you are under the liberty of such a person. You are under the influence of such a person. You have your rights. Yes, God has given you your rights. But when you find yourself in that confinement, your right is no longer available. Because somebody, oh my God, I don't know if somebody, somebody, somebody is blessed. Is somebody listening? Is, is it entering when you find yourself in that prison you are saved you are cleansed you are changed you are transformed your mind is renewed does somebody get it oh do you know what it takes for somebody to be a prisoner and a slave it takes a whole lot of things for somebody to be a slave and a prisoner so jesus christ gave himself a prisoner for you and i he gave himself a prisoner for you and i because he had all the right to have all the rights to call himself lord on his throne alone and not come here but coming here alone on this earth is prison enough it is prison enough he gave himself a prisoner and I will show you I want somebody to help me read the Word of God give, give, give the microphone to Auntie Barbara today see if you avail yourself God is going to speak to you if you avail yourself God is going to bless you if you avail yourself God is going to transform you somebody you came your prayer was God I need a word God I need a transformation God I need a touch God I need to repair my relationship with you tonight or this day is your service this day is for you God organized this service for you please read me Isaiah chapter 53 verse 7 to 11 
you are there, you can read it for me. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 7 to 11. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 7 to 11. Mm. He was oppressed mm. and he was afflicted. My God. Yet he opened not his mouth. My God. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter mm. and as a sheep before its shares is silent. It's silence. The Bible said he was led to the slaughter. And he was silent. How can somebody I know that is the lion now behave himself as a lamb that is harmless? Go into the slaughter. Is this not slavery enough? Is this, is this not denying his rights? Is this not denying his power, his fullness? What makes him go and come down on this earth for you and I? Is that not slavery enough? Please continue. So he opened not his mouth. He opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison mm. and from judgment. Mm. And who will declare his generation? My God. For he was cut off from the land of the living. He was. For the transgressions of my people. Mm. He was stricken. And they made him his grave with the wicked. Mm. But with the rich at his death. Because. He had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put in him to grieve. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, mm. and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his My life. God. The Bible said, the Lord left himself, gave up his pomp, which is his glory, and accepted and took the mantle, accepted the chains, just because of you and I. And, 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 and do you want to play with it? Do you want to joke with it? Do you want to play with it? Do you want to joke with it? Do you appreciate that? That it is, it is not called, huh? you cannot hear that a Santahini or the president will leave his car and walk. He will not. Unless maybe for health reasons, the doctor told him to walk. So there is something, there is an interest he will But for nothing he won't. This man, our savior, Jesus left his throne. Accepted bondage just because of you and I. That means you are precious. So why are you living your life like that? Why are you controlled by the passions and the desires of the earth? Knowing the price that was paid for you. It was a price that was paid for you. Anything that is valuable, a price is paid for it. Because you are valuable, God paid a price for you. You have not understood that. You've not come to an understanding of that. That is why you live life anyhow. That is why you count salvation as a mere thing. Somebody wish to have an opportunity. They are not having it. You have it right now here. What are you doing? What are you doing? So after Jesus giving himself up as a slave, he called us to slavery. Do you believe that? Do you believe that you are called to be a slave of God? If you don't believe it, then the preaching ends here. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us close. Do you believe it? So he called us to slavery. Let's read something in Luke chapter 9 verse 23. Luke chapter 9 the verse 23. Yes. Then he said to them all, mm. If anyone desires to come after me, mm. Let him deny himself. If you desire to come after God, you need to deny yourself. And how can a person deny himself if he is not in bondage? If he doesn't submit himself to be under the authority of somebody. If you don't do that, then you, are not, you, you, you can do anything. So if you are called like this, as the word of God is saying in Luke chapter 9 verse 23, say deny yourself. You know you have your right inter. Somebody slaps you, you can slap back. But you refuse to stretch your hand and you put your hand back to you. Are you not a slave enough? Are you not a slave enough? Why don't you exercise your right? Why don't you obey your reflex actions? 
When somebody land you, bow, you land back, bow. Yes, we are free. We are living a free life on this earth. But this call doesn't permit you to do that. It means you are in a certain confinement of God, the prison of God, a prisoner of God. Continue. If anyone desires to come after me, mm-hmm. let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. Will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. Yes. So this is why you are a prisoner enough. You are called to deny yourself so that you will not commit the things you used to commit in the world again. Because once you are summoned onto this call, or into this call, before in the world you can smoke, before in the world you can drink, before the, in the world you can womanize, because before in the world you can lie, before in the world you can do things that doesn't befit the child of God. But now you are caught into a certain confinement. It means you can't do them anymore. You cannot do them anymore. So. If a prisoner in our natural uh, uh, world, if somebody is held into prison, that means the person is kept so that the person doesn't commit the sin he committed again. Right? So when you are called into this prison of God, it means what? You give up whatever you used to do in the world. You don't do them again so if you are doing them again it means you are you have not accepted the call you still have your right in you intact you still are walking and making way and making path onto hell you have not chosen the streets of eternity every righteous soldier has accepted to be a slave that is why in our world the soldiers they have accepted and taken an oath to prepare and preserve and to present whoever is an authority over them no matter what if you bribe them with money they are not supposed to give up they will give their chest for it myself and pastors and we met a man he said i was in the national security and we were trained that when somebody shoots a gun you collect it with your chest at the person that you are guarding why should i give my chest for a gun that is not mine a shot that is not mine if they wanted to shoot me they would have aimed at me but they aimed at you why am i taking the shot for you because I have sworn, I have accepted, I have, I have not denied the call. I said I will, that is why I am there. So I don't have to be a hypocrite, I don't have to be a pretender, I don't have to just be there for the salary, I am there to serve my purpose. So most of us, we are in church, you are not serving the purpose of God, even after calling you and washing you and denying you of sinning again. You are wallowing yourself in the mare again. The dog returning back to its vomit. Most of us returning back to our vomit. Returning back to the old things we used to do. You are not captured. I've been captured by a love I can't explain. And now you have me. And I'm forever changed. I belong to you. I belong to you. So he said, Now, my life is not my own. Most of the times we sing songs that we don't know the meaning of it. We don't want to, we don't, we don't want to discern the word. If we discern the words of the songs we sing, we will shut up and we will not sing it because we know that even the, pe- the people that composed it don't know what they composed. Mm-hmm. To you. So my life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself to you. Oh, my life is not my own. To you I belong. Oh, I give myself. I give myself to you. I give myself.
myself away Oh, I give myself away So you can use me I give myself away Oh, 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 oh. I give myself away So you can use me I give myself away Oh, 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 I give myself away so you can use me. So until you are ready to count yourself a slave for Christ Jesus, you enjoy freedom in the world and eventually find your way to hell. In the world, it's a lot of freedom. In the world, Freedom is without sacrifice, but in God, freedom comes with what? Sacrifice. Do you believe it? Somebody said in here, you know you are not free. You are not free. You know you are not free. Receive freedom in the name of Jesus Christ. Did you hear that? Receive freedom in the name of Jesus Christ. A prisoner submits to do the things of he that has called him. That's a prisoner of Jesus Christ. A prisoner is denied of worldly pleasure. Yes. Because there is club going on. There is football matches going on. There is Chelsea, all these things going on. But he is in a confinement. If they don't tell him, come and watch, you cannot watch. If they don't set it up in the prison, you cannot. If they don't bring the club to the prison, you cannot. You cannot go out. Can you? So why are you in Christ and want to go out and go and do all those things? Hmm? A prisoner is denied of worldly pleasure. First John 2 15 he said what love not the world and the things in the world anybody that love the world the love of the father is not in him you are eventually losing the love of the father because you have accepted you have embraced the love of the world look at the taste of your, your fashion sense this one is not fashionable enough is it it's simple right <laughs> Yeah, your fashion sense tells us that you are not godly. If I'm speaking to myself, I receive it in the name of Jesus. I repent. Yeah, your fashion sense tells that you are not ready. You just have the name Jesus Christ in your mouth. Yes, people can call the name, but if you don't have a relationship, it will not work. Unless maybe by sovereignty, the Lord decides to allow you to use His name. Are you a prisoner of Christ and yet your love for the world is still intact? It means you have not accepted the call. You have not. Because you have not denied the worldly pleasures. You have not. You cannot run with the world and win. Even the fastest man on earth can never run with the world and win. The world is on a top speed that nothing can catch it up. That is why today, if you buy a Range Rover Vela, tomorrow it is an old-fashioned one. Something new is going to come. If you killed your father for a uh, Corolla Kwame today, are we using Kwame? We are not using Kwame. We are not using that small Corolla again. People killed their parents for that. Can you run with the world? A more reason why it is possible and it is expedient for you. It is good for you to remain in Christ. In Christ, you can run smoothly with him. It is only in Christ that you can run a good race and accomplish and receive the crown. In the world, you can never run and win. If the world is promising you that come, let us run and win, win trophies for ourselves. Don't go because the trophy, you cannot hold it. The promises of the world is vain. It is appealing, but what? Vain. The promises of the world is appealing. It is beautiful. It is something your eyes cannot reject because the eyes send signals to your soul. And when the eyes see something and it desires, it communicates it to the heart. And then David took Bathsheba. Two 
cannot run with the world. You will not win. So if a voice is speaking to you, if the voice of the devil is speaking to you, that come and I will bless you. That is why Jesus said, no. When the devil offered him that bow yourself to me, you see all these kingdoms, I'll give it to you. He said, no. Because those kingdoms, those houses, that pump that was in that place at that particular time. Let's say Jesus Christ is subject to die. He's a man like me. He can die and that is it. If he accepted it hmm, in about five years to come, those kingdoms he saw, those houses will become old. To become useless. So the call of the devil is what? Useless. And the things of the devil is what? Vain and useless. It is like a chasing after the wind and feeding on it. You will never be satisfied. The only thing you'll be doing is flatulating because when air goes into your body, you have to re release. When it comes, it goes in here, it has to come out. The only people that will profit is the plants, carbon dioxide. So you are living for plants. When you enjoy the things of the devil, you are living for plants. You give it out, and the plants will grow, and we, the righteous, will eat it. I pray, may the Lord find me a righteous man. But may the Lord find you a righteous man. Have you denied yourself? Have you denied yourself of worldly pleasures? A Christian yet, in the name of funny those reels that are on Facebook you know this is what is happening to we Christians we know I don't have to listen to worldly songs but those kids those short short kids those funny things you realize that you are watching them you are laughing they are playing worldly songs in it don't you think you are listening to a worldly song you are and we even post them on our statuses and profiles share them which I'm guilty of we share them and we laugh and God is God is what grieving times you you cannot help yourself but you, this thing looks so funny you watch it and laugh it and laugh about it and they are playing those worldly songs under it that is why the things of the world looks appealing to the eyes your eyes need circumcision before you can deny the world a prisoner is denied of worldly pleasure a prisoner doesn't have any daily purpose. A prisoner doesn't have a purpose. Your routines are given you by whoever captured you. Today you are going to weed. You weed. Today we are going to scrub the house of this master, this warden. You will what? Scrub. So as a Christian, as a prisoner of God, you don't have a routine of yourself. If God didn't give you that, if God didn't tell you, go here and you go. That is not the routine God gave you. You are not a prisoner of God. You are not captured. A prisoner's routine, a, 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 prisoner's, a prisoner has no purpose of his own. His daily routines are given him. So God can come through your plans anytime. You wash your car, you prepare everything. Today I'm going to see my friend. God comes in. No, you are not going. No, you are not going. Will you question it? And if you question it, it is to your own detriment. But a prisoner, somebody that is broken, that has accepted God, is have he, he has no purpose. His routines, his itineraries are designed by God. Are your itineraries, are your routines, where your feet go? The places you walk, are they designed by God? Are your daily routines designed by God? Are they spirit-filled, Holy Spirit-filled? Are they? Are they? Ask yourself. If it is not godly inspired, then you are not a prisoner of God. A prisoner's body is subject to stripes. You know what it is? You are subject to beating. When a prisoner is beaten in the prison yard, can he beat back? Can he? That is why, as a child of God, you evangelize, you preach to somebody, they will slap you, they will pour things on you. A prisoner of God, you cannot retaliate. Okay, today you will see, you will move your shoe, let's fight. You are not a prisoner of God. Your character tells that you are not a prisoner of God. 
the character you portray in church and out of church tells that you are not a prisoner of God. A prisoner's body is subject to beatings. Do we have something like that in the Bible? Yes. Oh my God. Let's read something in. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 24 to 27. I want us to open our spirit up for this. Second Corinthians chapter 11, the verse 24 to 27. Mm. From the Jews, from the Jews, five times, I received 40 strips, stripes minus one. Paul, that was a rowdy man. That was, went to collect letters to go and bring the prisoners. And when he was going to, when he captured prisoners, he doesn't smile with them. Some people collect slap. Some people, some people are beaten. He, that was a rowdy man. Now look at him. Somebody is beating him and he cannot beat. Somebody is disciplining his body and he cannot. You need to be, you need to deny yourself so much for this. Most of us are here. I don't think if somebody slap you now, you let go. You fight back. And there's going to be a time all these things are going to happen to us. You are going to be beaten. You are going to be slapped. You are going to be done. All kind of things. That is where your Christian virtues will tell. If you are a Christian or not. If you are a prisoner of God. If you have accepted brokenness for God. Please continue. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Hmm. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, mm. in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. In weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. My Bible at that side, the fasting, it was not like Paul wanted to fast though. He fasted because there was no food to eat. He said fasting on where charts on it, so a, a, a self-imposed fasting because there is lack, there is nothing to eat. A prisoner is subjected to all these things. Are you willing? Are you ready? Do you think you can go through all these things? If yes, congratulations. And if no, you are not ready. You are not a prisoner of God. People say it is easier said than done. I believe it. You can easily say it. But it takes a child of God that is broken, that has accepted to be a slave, a prisoner of God, to go through these things peacefully without retaliating and reacting. The man was beaten. You, most of us have watched the Passion of Christ, right? You see all those things? They landed at his back and they pulled it. Those things. They have mouths. 39. They are 39. They are 39. They are not 40. So, in those days, if they capture you, they beat you 39 times. If they exceed the 39 times and make it 40, you can sue them. Because they have treated you as a slave. Those days, that is what it, it was. That is why he said 40 stripes save one. That means 39 stripes. Are your backs ready? Your face is so important to you. It's not as if don't take care of your face. But I'm saying it in contest for you to understand something. Your body, your shape is so important to you. And it is taking the place of God in your life. That is why somebody will be late. If today you ask the reason why some people were late, you'll be shocked that in the assembly of God, it was because they were trying to figure out what to wear. Mostly ladies, right? Are you a prisoner of God? Are you a prisoner of God? This one will shock you. A prisoner has no home. 
he is denied of comfort a prisoner has no home the bible said jesus said foxes have holes but the son of god doesn't have where to lay his head that master jesus christ is this serious did he really mean he doesn't have anywhere to sleep no he can have a million place to sleep in fact he just told peter go and talk to that man he'll give you a place then we will have the communion there did he speak to him no he divinely connected that but he said i have no home if you're a prisoner of god and a lover of god your house will not be your comfort because every day you'll be on the move to do something for god like missions you see what pastor is doing you will not love the comfort of your house if you can sleep in your house for six months you've not done anything for god then you are really sleeping so a prisoner of god doesn't have a home jesus christ was seen here was seen here was seen here was seen here preaching the word of god doing the divine assignment of god what is your divine assignment it is because maybe you have not realized your divine assignment or you don't care that is why home is home home is sweet home sweet home that is why home is sweet I can't wait to go home and go and lie on my bed and relax. Yes, you have a very nice bed. That nice bed will lead you to hell in contest. Do you understand it? I don't say if you have a bed. You know, maybe somebody is preaching a kutia preaching because you know that in his house, he doesn't have water bed. He doesn't have all those nice beds that he can sleep and feel fine. His bed, he sleeps and he, find, he finds his, his, uh, uh, his, what is this, his spinal cord in front of his stomach. So he will preach that thing and say, if you have, if you, your bed is this. No, this one, it's, it, is, it is a proverb that I'm telling you. It is a deep mystery. You are not getting it. No, somebody is not getting it. I should break it down for us. I wish Pastor Christian is here so that you can break it down. Amen. Yes. So you still love home. Home is sweet. Because you don't want to involve yourself in anything God. You, are not, you have not accepted to be captured for God. Those people that were captured for God, allowed themselves to be captured for God, they were hiding themselves. The Bible said they hide to do meetings. They could have slept in their home. Just deny that man Jesus Christ. And go and go and find peace in home home sweet home right but he knew they knew peter knew john knew andrew knew but told me knew it was judas alone that they didn't know that's rosina no that's paulina no that's magna no that's peace no that's pastor Anthony, no that's pastor timothy no does i do i know i nearly said does i know in fact does i care english english is how you make it you see, we are not in England. We can construct English for the betterment and the sweetment of the understanding. Thank you, Pastor Timothy. It doesn't mean don't try to speak good English. When you have the opportunity, speak. Okay? So a prisoner don't have a home. He don't have comfort. Because the passion and the burning zeal of winning souls for Christ is constantly at rest in you. So whenever you are sleeping, you even wake up. I must go. I must do my father's work. Jesus at the age of 12. Don't you know I must go about my father's business? At the age of 12, what was I doing? I was catching fish. I was playing football. Dirty. You see my trousers turned to this side. You see my clothes. I didn't have any girlfriend. I didn't have any... I, I, didn't, I didn't have anything that I was connected to. Like, I, did, I wasn't masturbating. I wasn't doing all those things. I was, I was free in my own confinement. At the age of 12... Jesus Christ said, I must do my father's work. How old are you now? It is a rhetorical question. You, you don't need to answer me. Answer it in your head. How old are you now? And what are your achievements of, for God? I'm not trying to tell you to boast, but what have you done for God? It is a question to your soul. How old are you now? Now, subtract, take your age. Let's do some mathematics here. 
I didn't like maths when I was in school. I didn't fail though. I had B, B3. And I know what I did. I did a lot of gymnastics to make sure I stay in that place. No wonder today I'm not using my certificate. It's not that I don't know book. Or I know book, but at times education is somehow, you know. But how are you using your certificate? When we have the opportunity, we'll go to school, but if, at times when you know your purpose, there are people that dropped out from school. Today I saw somebody when we were coming. Do you remember the guy that waved me in the car? In school, he would carry last. He did carry last. But he was in the car. I was standing at the roadside looking for a car. I was brilliant than him, making the better grades. I should have been in some vela. But he is driving. I. It is not about education, even though it's good. It is about God that blesses your efforts. It doesn't mean I'm poor. I'm not poor. I'm rich. In fact, today I'm super rich. I'm super rich that I was even owing. You think I'm rich so that when we get home, you collect your share? Yeah. So a prisoner have no home. Do you have a home? Are you sleeping? God is talking to you. It was not as safe. He can't have a home, but the, but the duty and the love for you and I made him homeless. Today, people are in the streets of Ireland, people are in the streets of US, in Canada, in all these places, homeless. It is because they can't afford a house. But you, this particular homelessness is not because you can't afford a house. It is because you understand. Do you get it? It is because you understand what it takes to deny yourself and be under God. Do you get it? If you get it, say amen. A prisoner's feeling is counted as rubbish. Your jailer or warden does not care if you are in the mood to work or not. Can you imagine you are in prison and they call you, hey, we are going to do groundswork. I'm not in the mood. Do it. You are not in the mood. In prison, you are not in the mood. Oh, wow. You are not in the mood. In the prison, especially in Savon prison, you are not in the mood. Your face will turn to your back. So, when you come to Christ, your feelings mustn't. Oh, is that in English? In fact, forget it. Your feeling shouldn't control you. Because if your feeling is controlling you, you're not a prisoner for God. Because your feelings can lead you to do things. And most of the time, this is what we love. When we are corrected, or when we are spoken to, to our own salvation, that is when we are not in the mood setting. Because the angry face I'll show you, the attitude I'll give to you, but should you have catch the revelation to understand that this correction is the one building up your soul you wouldn't reject it or not be in the mood for the man of God's foolishness or his long talk the foolishness of God is wisdom so a prisoner doesn't have a right to say I'm not in the mood in fact Jonah did the same thing because he said, God, why? These people, I am not in the mood. I will not preach. I will not go. But your mood is not God's mood. If you have accepted to be a prisoner of God, God's mood needs to be built in you. Because if the mood of God is in you, you move according to his dictates. You move according to his directions. He said, Philip, join this chariot. He was reading Isaiah chapter 53. Like a sheep before his share is dumped, he opened not his mouth to the slaughter. He said, do you understand what you're reading? He said, is the prophet talking about himself or somebody else? When you have the mood of God, you'll be directed 
in God's own way. So Philip was directed to the Ethiopian eunuch. Jonah! Most of us here are Jonah. You know that God has given you an assignment, but you are not in the mood. Don't, don't say, I don't know how to do it. You are not in the mood. You are not in the mood. Most of us have denied the assignment God has given us. And we are flowing in the world as regular and normal people. The work of God is not suffering, no. God has what? About 7,000 people you don't know. In fact, God is not counting on you. God is not counting on you. You are doing your, you are doing your own self-favor. Most of all, we think that God is counting, God is counting on me. That is why uh, it's, uh, it's, it's my liberty. You are counting on me. So I have to determine the time to work for you. You woke up, you receive a message. Go here, preach here, do this, give this to this person. But you know, you don't care. And because most of us, because we don't care, we are not in the mood. You know that many people have died and have made hell. Because we weren't in the mood. Somebody is in hell right now. Because you was not in the mood. An American will say you wasn't in the mood. Americans, most of them don't know how to speak they, they jam the English up. You was coming. You was coming. Yes. So do you know the things, the, the punishment you have heaped over your head because you weren't in the mood? But when Jonah, God pushed him to go, did the people repent? Was he happy? You an enemy to God working for God. Do you understand what I said? You have been an enemy for God working for God. It is like we are with you, but we are not with you. We have the name Christian on us. They have the form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. Most of us have the have the form of godliness, but the power thereof we don't have. It is not about nice preaching that God is going to look at and take you to heaven. It is about living the word of God. Do you mean every single word you, leave, you, you say? Do you mean it? He said a man that reads the word of God and doesn't do it. It's like somebody that carefully observes himself in the mirror only to go out to forget how he looks like. You know how you look like? Did you carefully observe yourself? The image you are seeing is not you. You have the image of the world on you. You have the image of laziness. You have the image of a child of the devil. Are you a prisoner of God? Are you sure you are? A prisoner's steps are numbered and his move movements restricted. You cannot go anywhere without the permission of your superintendent. You can, you can be killed or shot in an attempt to violate. A Christian will die in the world if he does. As a prisoner, your steps are numbered. The places your feet steps are numbered. You can't just go anywhere as a child of God. Your feet can't be seen anywhere. Your feet can't be seen in the Ashao joint. Your feet can't be seen in the bar, in the drinking place. Your feet can't be seen at the gathering of the scornful. Your feet can't be seen there. Your feet can't be. Your feet can't be where liars associate. Your feet can't be there. So if a prisoner decides to go beyond the steps given him, he might be shot. So in the same way, if a Christian refuses to obey the boundaries God has set for him, he will die in the world. The world will enter you and you'll be drunk with the world and you will die with the world. Most of us are walking but we are dead. Our souls are suffering. Our souls, there are heaps that are packed on our souls, even, even in the church right now. A 
prisoner stands. That is why when you're going somewhere, the man that is placed on you or the leader that is placed on you say, my child, don't go. A prisoner doesn't have the right to go outside so he doesn't see what is there. So don't go. God is saying, don't go. But don't go. Mr. Afu, don't go. Selina, don't go. Mavis, don't go. Nicole, don't go. Akusia, don't go. Gaza, don't go. How many times have we heard the don't go of God and we went anywhere? When you went, was it well with you? Was it well with you? So you know that it wasn't well with you. Why did you go? You know that it would definitely not end well with you. Why did you go? And more reason why God has the right to throw any man to hell. You deserve it when you make it. When you make hell, you deserve it. When you make heaven, you deserve it. And if you are on your way to hell right now, you know. I don't have to tell you. You know. You know. You know. A prisoner obeys instructions from his superiors or what, and he does not indulge in laziness. Are you lazy in the church? Are you lazy to the things of God? Wake up, prisoner. Wake up. Wake up. A prisoner's home is chains. That is why Jesus Christ gave himself up to be chained up for you and I. His home is chains. A, pris a, a prisoner's home is what? Chains. It means you don't have the freedom in the world. You don't have the freedom in the world. A prisoner's home is chains. Hallelujah. A prisoner is careful and behaves himself or herself in fear of what's next and not to fall in it again. Because whatever happened to you and made you to be captured, when you are placed there, it means that you are prevented from doing that or doing a new thing. You are there, kept there, make sure you are trained so that when you come out, you don't do those things again. So when you are a prisoner of God, you are trained to respond to holiness, to respond to righteousness, to respond to sanctification, to respond to sanity of mind and purity of speech. Your speeches are not pure. Hallelujah. A prisoner is careful and behave himself. As a child of God, you need to be careful not to fall in the net of the enemy or our adversary. Be careful. Try all you can not to fall in the net of the enemy. He will drag you. He will drag you. Are you a prisoner of God? Or are you ready to accept the prison sentence of God. That prison where there is peace. That prison where there is joy. That prison where your purpose is known. That prison where you see joy and peace. I want you to commit yourself to God. You've heard a lot. I can give you a prayer point. You know what to pray. Oh my God. Jesus. Yes, pray. Here are the one in my thing now. So one in my farm, Miss Ashe. My Jim Quite for a. Here are the my heart in the world. And no teen I make go to stress. I didn't question when you now. Many pain you nails. Only era de mi ura nyame una medao 
明年好命，笑容看。And if I was a train and all, dream me free, my time for myself. Never want she she ni na. Don't know ye she rama me, me different me baby ni na remo. If I was me ni bo me hoba, na ma me ye so but me ti ma. Na ma me ye so buti ma eh na ma me ye so buti na eh mi mo na ma me ye so buti na eh na ma me ye so buti ma. Strong, but spiritually are dying. Ask God to help you. Mami ye, so bute hinti ma, eya mi. Mami ye, mami ye, mami ye, eya. Rock of God, that you will not be shaken. He's the way the song said, "Let me be that solid rock that I will not be shaken. That I will not be shaken. That I will not be shaken. That solid rock of God. That I will not be shaken. Receive that solid rock of God. That you will not shake in the midst of trouble. You will not shake. You will stand for God." You are everything I have. When you are not with me, I am nothing. Somebody, your strength is God. That's what I bow and say. I question you, Lord, glorify yourself in me, so people will see that you are God. My Lord, when I'm down, I look to you. Me need I have nobody but you. Say one call. And if I want to. Three and no, Jimmy free my time for himself. Now my one she she nina, that no nina she rama me. Me free, me be be me na remo. My wo to me no bomb me hold by. Now my me ye so but empty ma. Make me that solid rock that I will not move. Someone, let it be your prayer. Mami ye, mami ye, mami ye. Mami ye, sa obutenti na. Eya. 
ohine ye shira wo ye tron tron wo asom je hine na 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 ye shira wo If you don't order my steps, who will order my steps, Lord? If you leave me alone, who will carry me? If you desist, if you forget about me, who will remember me? If you don't save me, if you don't remove me from that field, Lord, who will cleanse me? Lord, I need the washing of the water of your word again. Lord, wash me again. Lord, wash me again. Lord, wash me again. When the Lord comes into your life, as He's coming into your life again right now, everything will cease. Every storm will cease. Every power of the enemy will go. Every affliction will cease. Every storm in your life will cease. My God. Adini Nara Eti Adini Nara Eko Say yes Oh the Lord is your strength. May the Lord renew your strength, give you another strength that is more than the one you have for the work of God. Pastor Paco, I see the Lord releasing showers of rain over you. I see the rain of God over you, Pastor Paco. And what I see is you are joyful and your hands are lifted up above your head. And these showers of rain is pouring over you. And settling every inner battle and helping you to let go of that thing. Yes, you are hurt. And the Lord said, If you will avail yourself, you will see my glory. You will enjoy and 
eat the benefit of the land, you will see it. Yes. My God. Pastor Timothy, God has placed a mantle in you. No matter how hard the ground is, God has given you a mantle that breaks through hardness. He said, you will break, you will break it, you will break it. And nothing hard can stand before you. Open the floodgates. In abundance. And cause your rain to follow me. Baba. Open the floodgates. In abundance and cause your rain to fall on me. Baba, oh, Baba, oh, 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 oh. Baba, oh, hey. I see, I see the Spirit of God descending on Sister Emanuela. Je vois l'esprit de Dieu tombe sur toi. And this is what I'm hearing. Voici ce que j'entends. He is preparing you for the place you're going. Il te prépare pour l'endroit où tu es. Because one of the things that happen in Benin is that Car une des choses qui arrive au Bénin est que they cause frustration in the life of the men of God, the wife of the men of God. Il mène de la frustration dans la vie des Especially that man of God that is called by God to help the nation. Et particulièrement cet homme de Dieu qui est appelé à aider la nation. So when your wife is disturbed, you cannot do the work of God. Quand ta femme est embêtée, tu ne peux pas faire l'œuvre de Dieu. I see the Holy Spirit descending on you. J'ai vu le Saint Esprit descendre sur toi. Right now, the power of God is descending on you to help you on that land. Pour t'aider sur cette terre. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Au nom de Jésus. Receive that grace right now in the the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Anybody that want to poison your emotion in that land, may the Lord cause them to be ashamed in the mighty name of Jesus. May the storm of God roll and trample for your sake. May your eyes be fiery like fire. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. It is a mantle over your head. Receive that grace. It is a mantle over your head. And when you get to Benin, after everything, when you get to Benin, your husband will tell you that I saw God giving you a mantle. Remember this. Après tout, quand tu vas retourner au Benin, retiens ceci. Ton mari va te dire, je vois Dieu te remettre un manteau. And the Bible says, when Peter heard that, he remembered what God said to him. When what Jesus said to him. La Bible dit que quand Pierre entendit cela, il s'est souvenu de ce que Jésus. That is a confirmation. Voici la confirmation. May the Lord give you your first love again, peace. May your, the Lord give you that first love again. Yes. And Nicholas, I see that the enemy has prepared something grievous. The Lord wants you to seek a face through fasting. A very long, dedicated fasting. If you tell yourself truth, you realize that for some few days now, you are not getting what is happening to you, but it looks like something is going to happen. Is that right? Is that true? We are serving a living God. God wants you to pick a long time of fasting and seek his face. God wants to show you something. One day when you have the chance, go to your father. Tell your father, Father, I have come. Tell me truth. Tell me something I need to know. Tell me something I need to know. And when those things are said, let us hear. And we will direct you how to pray. But God is calling you to a long fasting. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're happy in the house of the Lord, I want you to give a standing ovation and give a clap offering unto the Lord. Give a clap offering unto the Lord of Lords, the God of Gods, the I am that I am, the ancient of days, the Nisi, the Chidekeno, 
in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. I am going with my prophet. Amen. 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 Prophet, God bless you. Wow. Anointed prophet. More grace. We are praying for him. We pray grace over his ministry that the Lord should continue to use him to be a blessing unto the church and unto others. We pray restoration that any virtue that has gone out from you today, may the Lord restore you. We pray an open heavens. We pray that may the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. And we declare this day that the sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. You are covered in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Wow. He said something very powerful and I'm blessed. A prisoner, as a prisoner, you don't have your will. You don't have your freedom. And even Jesus Christ he said, oh, Father, if in the book of Matthew 26, he said, oh, my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but yours. Even Jesus Christ doesn't have his will. If he had his will, he would have escaped that death. Hallelujah. So as a, as a Christian, a prisoner of Christ, you don't, have, you don't have your will. You only have the will of your Father, the Lord Jesus, in your life. Amen. God bless you. More grace unto you. Our woman, our woman, a word came for you today. And the Lord said that you shouldn't forget where he started with you. You should go back to him and hold on unto him. Don't forget where he took you from. So as you are living here today, remember this word. The Lord said, don't forget where he picked you from, our woman. And very soon, most of us, the pastors and some of the brethren, will be leaving to Cote d'Ivoire this week. Amen. So please, the rest of us that will be staying, let's be punctual in church. Let's come on time. And let's do more evangelism. Amen. This is Apollina. Will you be going? You will not be going. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, that's it for today. And pastor will be coming next week. So, let's keep him in prayer. The missionaries, let's remember them in prayer. Anytime you go before God, remember them. Amen. And we are taking offering for the mission to mission offering. But I see what you will be going here. Eh? Abijan. Wow. Pastor Parker will be going next week. This week, the following week. Wow. Prophet Prince too will be going. Pasado. <laughs> you can go around and start taking it. So you become a Pastado, any Mr. Anthony. More grace. Any Jesus. Uh, tomorrow we'll be meeting at the park for the evening prayer and Wednesday too in case it rains we will let you know where we'll be meeting amen let's be on our feet and we invite our mother to pray for us Let's put our hands together for her as she comes. Please, let's all bow our head. Heavenly Father, we bless you for this day. 
for all that you have done for us, for the blessing, the heavenly blessing that we receive. We bless you for, from the beginning of the service till the end, the way you use your servants. We bless you for the week that is starting. We know that you are about to do greater things in our lives. The things that will connect you more to us and us to you. As we know that the days are evil, please grind, grind us in you.